is right up close and personal. But there's something very, very special about being out here on foot, exploring some of the smaller details that we might get to see out here. And before they all disappear, let's have a look at what spent the night in this big open clearing. Some impala wondering about. Now they know that we're here. They've seen us. Obviously I'm not being quiet. But they're not too stressed out. Now generally with our animals out here, they react very, very differently to us on foot than they do to the vehicle. But it does give us an opportunity to get right up close and personal with all of the different things that you can find that you don't necessarily spot from the vehicle. Now, I've been very fortunate in my childhood because although I grew up in a city called Johannesburg, which is one of the biggest cities in the whole wide Africa or South Africa, I spent lots of time visiting the bush, going out on school camps, and I've just always felt incredibly at home out here, wondering about the wild and enjoying the different things that we have. Now, one of the things that we do do when we are children in South Africa, and you've got to be careful here, you've got to do it without <laughs> Chandra stepping on sticks. <laughs> what you do, so we've seen those impala, if you look closely here, you've got to find some nice poo. This is impala poo, I know it's impala poo because of the shape and the colour. You collect some that's nice and dry. I wouldn't advise it with any wet poo, and definitely don't put anything in your mouth that you wouldn't, that you haven't checked with an adult first. But this is a game that we play in South Africa called Bok Drol Spoog, and I'll show you how it goes. First of all, okay, and now what's this? Oh no, that was a pathetic one. One more, one more go. <sighs> that was a bit better. And the competition is to see that you can spit it as far as possible. Now, don't go and collect fresh impala dung because it's soft and wet and you really don't want that in your mouth. And you only want to do it with herbivore poo. Only herbivore poo is okay to do this with. Definitely, we never touch any of the carnivore poo. So hyena scat, lion scat, leopard scat, that's really gross. This is okay though. No, I'm definitely not going to win this competition genre. Would you like to try? Give it a go. There we go. Genre is going to spit it at me. That was a good shot, Genre. Our Lucas Garden School, we saw the impala dashing off into the distance. And yes, lions will eat impala. Now, it depends on how many lions you have, because lots of lions need a big meal. That makes sense, doesn't it? If you're lots of lions and you're big, it's like going to a buffet, but then you've got to go and get something like a buffalo. Make sure that you over-cater rather than under-cater. But if you've got one or two lionesses and they're feeling particularly hungry, then they will eat impala. Now, impala are the most common antelope in our area, so in this particular part of the game reserve, which means that they're a very important food source for all sorts of things, from leopards, cheetah, wild dog, even hyena, spotted hyena will hunt impala every now and again. And that's particularly true in the next few months when the impala give birth because then they've got lots of little babies wandering around which is perfect food because they aren't obviously as fast or as alert as the adults. Now before we go any further I have to introduce you to someone but he's running away. <laughs> Over there is Herbert. Now you can see Herbert walking in front of us. Now Herbert's job is to help us find something, sort of basically a third set of eyes while Jandra and myself talk to you and film whatever's out out here. So Herbert goes ahead and he is a master tracker so he is really, his expertise is finding big animals and he walks ahead to make sure that there's no elephants or lions or if they are that we know that they're there so that we don't surprise them or they don't surprise us. It's very important to walk responsibly out here, it's the best feeling in the world when you get to see an animal, a big animal on foot, but it's really, really important that we remember we're in their home and that we must respect them at all times. Now that's something I know that Hayden feels very, very strongly about and he's currently sitting with one of our absolutely favourite leopards. Let's go back to Hayden and the Queen of Juma.